Okay, hello, I am John, and today I'm going to be doing another one of the talk things that I've done before. This one's going to be a bit more random because I don't exactly have a topic that I've kind of pre-planned. Like the last one was kind of about gender, I might touch that a bit again because some of that kind of stuff does just irritate me. I don't exactly understand why, but... Anyway, it just does. I don't understand why. But, like, all these things that people feel like they need to create labels for just bothers me. Since a while ago, one of my friends said that he, I think he called it demisexual? He's gay, but he said he was, like, demisexual, which, by what I can understand, basically means he likes to know the person a lot before they, you know, he wants to get into a relationship. Which, in my opinion at least, is just smart dating tactics. You don't want to start dating a complete asshole. That's just a, that's just a smart choice. I don't understand why anyone wouldn't want to do that. But, all of a sudden, just, nope, it's, it's apparently a weird thing that is now completely new labels, completely new everything. Screw this webcam. Eh, a bit better. Anyway, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why people need to formulate thousands of different labels for every little thing. Because, you know, yes, sure, I understand gay, I understand bi, I understand straight. Those are perfectly fine. But when you start getting into asexual, then I... Whatever other labels there are, since I don't bother trying to check for labels. It just, just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, if you're not, if you're a person who's not interested in a relationship at this point in time, just say you're not interested. Don't say, oh, I'm asexual. I don't exactly understand what asexual is. I don't know how long it lasts or anything. If it's like a permanent thing, and if it's a permanent thing, then... Granted, if it's a permanent thing, you don't. There's nothing to be, feel sorry for because you aren't interested anyway. But still, like, it's just. I don't know. That kind of stuff just annoys me. It really does. Because at then, it just almost feels like well, this is an age of inclusion and everything. It's like we're just segmenting and just separating people into little segments. So that each of these little segments, though they're still bound together, they're completely separated from others because of, you know, random stereotypes and offendedness and all of this stuff. Like, nowadays, people get so offended so easily. Since I went to this thing, that and a guy told a little story about this woman who didn't want to be referred to as a woman, whose name was Mars, then was doing talk at something, and this Southern African American gentleman, I say gentleman because he he had a, he had his proper manners and everything, he called her ma'am. Granted, it was by accident, because she doesn't like to be called ma'am, and she just apparently just got heavily offended. To the point where they had to stop the thing, the guy had to apologize and then he accidentally did it again, because it's just ingrained in him, which I can understand, because, you know, it's ingrained into me to try to hold the door half the time. And it's ingrained into me to say please most of the time. Sometimes I forget, that's my bad, but it's ingrained enough that I at least know every single time that something happens, I should say my please and thank you. Whether I do... Is a completely different story, but I know I should. Some people, they aren't like that. I've watched many Let's Gentile Parent videos. I understand how bad people's manners are. I have lived in this world. I understand how bad people's manners are. It gets aggravating. Though, that woman, uh, I'm just going to refer to her as a woman because, frankly, as I kind of got into it, the gender thing, there really are only two genders. Third, if you count people with both. Fourth, if you count people with neither. There is no, like, nothing gender where 
you know, there, I don't see the point in gender fluidity because it's because I, I still am going to just go along the lines that gender is literally what part you have, what part you play in reproduction. End of discussion. So as you can see, I'm wearing a polo. Anyone can wear a damn polo. I'm wearing blue jeans. Anyone can wear blue jeans. Anyone can wear a skirt if they want. Markiplier has done it multiple times. Does anyone judge him off of that? Probably. Should anyone judge him off of that? No. Because that is his choice. Let the man be. He's also said how comfortable it is. I'm going to take his word for it because I don't want to wear a skirt. I like my specific uh, outfit. I even get uncomfortable whenever I'm wearing shorts. Anyway, it's just like nowadays people get offended so easily and it does just bother me. And then people think, oh, you have to make all these little segments. You have to split people off. If we were all just more unified, there'd be a lot less offensiveness. There'd be a lot less people getting offended. There'd probably be a lot they a lot less race or purposeful racism, a lot less purposeful sexism, since being someone who has accidentally had a slip up. I understand people can accidentally say racist, sexist, etc. ist things, since I have accidentally said a racist thing in my life. I was going on one train of thought, and I rephrased it to make it sound completely racist by accident. Didn't mean it. I was going along the lines of criminal stuff because we were talking about trends and how African Americans are stereotypically criminals, even though they're not just criminals. And you can easily see how I would have accidentally rephrased that being in middle school. Yeah. Not a good time. I never lived that down. And I never have lived that down. Since, I mean, that is just a... Thing, though is there's going to be stereotypes and people need to just realize yes stereotypes exist and just move on with their lives because stereotypes are just going to be a thing no matter what and just like just people need to stop getting offended so much i'm, I'm just going to leave it there go on to something else because i'm just going to keep talking about people getting easily butt hurt over the very smallest of things. Like, I'm pretty sure right now I've offended at least 50 people. If 50 people are even, if like, if like 55 people are even going to watch this. Like, I'm pretty sure I've already offended a fair amount of people. Do I care that I've offended a lot of people? Only a very small amount. Because for goodness sakes, you people need to not be offended so easily. I have said nothing that's that terribly bad. At all. I've just spoken my mind. Anyone can speak their mind. Do you want to go into the comments and call me a shithead? Call me a shithead. I'll probably just call you one right back. Or just delete your comment or something. That's your opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. This is a free country. We can say whatever the hell we want. We're going to move along, though. Because as I said, well, let's not get into it. Since one of the things that I had kind of thought of to talk about was just misconceptions. Since there are a lot of misconceptions that do kind of bother me. One of the biggest I'm just going to get into because I'm a big dinosaur person is A. Velociraptors are only like three feet tall. They're actually quite small. Two. Tyrannosaur or not Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus are a dinosaur. Pterodons and pterosaurs, pterodactyls, those are not dinosaurs. Those are flying reptiles. Third, plesiosaurs, uh, leopleurodons, mosasaurs, all of those oceanic lizards, those are not dinosaurs. Those are sea reptiles, or oceanic lizards, if you want to call them that. I don't think they are classified as lizards, they're classified as reptiles. Regardless, not dinosaurs. And not even everything on land at those point in time were dinosaurs. Regardless, it that is just one of those things that bothers me because I am such an avid dinosaur lover. 
It just bothers me. Because people don't bother to check their facts. And that's, I, and to be honest, that's probably one of the biggest issues nowadays is people don't tend to check their facts. People don't realize when they're wrong. Even I'm, I'm one of those people. I will readily admit that. I am a person who does not always realize I am wrong. Because simply put, I don't always check my facts. When I'm in an argument with my dad, I will check my facts. Fireworks. Because, you know, 4th, actually, what's the 5th of July. Or, no. Oh, yes, yes, it is the 5th of July. The thing there, I was thinking the 7th was the day, not the month. I don't know my days and months very well. Anyway, so, like, what? It's just one of those things. Anyway, like, I will, ch I will check my facts when I'm in an argument. Besides that, I won't check my facts. And that's just one of the biggest things, is people need to check their facts more often. I need to check my facts more often. Because if you actually know what you're talking about, you can say it. If you don't, try not to say it with certainty. Because that's one of the biggest things. Is all of the things that I'm saying, it's either opinion or take it with a grain of salt. Because I don't fully know what I'm talking about here. Mostly it's the first one, though. Mostly it's just my opinion. So... Take that as you will. I'm not trying to sway any of you. I'm just trying to get this out here. Because, frankly, put I rant about this on to myself way too much that I shouldn't get this out here. Regardless, we're going to move on a little bit to more kinds of misconceptions. Because there's some health-related ones that bother me. First and foremost is a whole ton of people saying, oh, fat is bad for you, sugar is bad for you, blank is bad for you. They're not bad for you. Since, at least in my opinion, bad for you means you shouldn't have any of it. You should not have any of it because if you have any of it, it will be detrimental. Sorry. But that's not true. Your body needs sugar, your body needs salt, your body needs fat, your body needs chole or not, not cholesterol. I mean, I think it needs a little bit of cholesterol, but not a lot. It makes its own. Your body needs carbs. That's the C word I'm looking for, carbs. Your body needs those things. Yes, it doesn't need them in massive amounts, but your body still needs them. Because at the end of the day... The only thing that is actually providing your body with energy is sugar. Carbs is basically just another kind of sugar. It's a slower burning kind of sugar that plants like grains create. Proteins, they do their own job. Fats, they do their own job. Sugar, sugar is every single biological organism's energy source. Whether it has factories to create the sugar inside of its body, whether it has factories to transmute other things into sugars or whether it just straight gets the sugars doesn't matter still need sugar to survive that is our fuel source and that's just one of the biggest things that and that does kind of bother me is just people saying oh sugar is so bad for you you should you should try to limit it as much as possible don't try to limit it too much Yes, you shouldn't be, you know, having a candy bar with your sh soda or anything like that. You know, you shouldn't be overdoing it because too much of anything is a bad thing. Because, like, water poisoning is a thing where if you drink too much water, you can die. Granted, that is a lot of water, but it's probably less than you think. Same thing with sugar, same thing with carbs, same thing with fats, same thing with... Salt, same things with all of those things that people say is bad for you. That people say, oh, it will, you know, oh, it'll make you really heavy. It'll make you really big. It'll make you sluggish. It'll make you sleepy. It'll make you have less energy. It'll insert random thing here that's negative for the human body. Only in massive amounts. 
Yes, the massive amount varies from thing to thing, but point still remains. But you still need them. So they're not really bad for you. It's just bad in large quantities. Because yes, I will admit, I do have a bit of a gut, so I know I haven't had the healthiest of diets. But then again, I used to also like to eat cheeseburgers a lot. Then I became lactose intolerant, so I now I can't eat as many cheeseburgers. Because the cheese was the only thing that made me like the burger, and the cheese is something that I have to take medicine for, called lactate, which is basically the enzyme that my body no longer produces. Also, side note, because I got into an argument with this, lactose intolerance is not an allergy. Allergies can kill people. Lactose intolerance, the worst thing that it will do is make me either constipated, vomit, or have diarrhea. Worst thing it'll do. Yes, I can potentially die from one of those if it's that severe, but if it's that severe, it's caused by something besides lactose. Because lactose doesn't do it that bad unless, you know, I had myself like a freaking this tall milkshake. Like, bigger than my head, and, like, wide. Like a freaking, like, 100-ounce milkshake in one sitting. Then again, I'm having more than just that for problems if I'm having... If I had that in one sitting. And, yeah, that, that was just one of those things that kind of irritated me a little bit. is just the fact that people don't understand the differences between these things. Because a lot of things, there is a difference. Like, in between an intolerance and an allergy. Intolerance is your body can't break it down. Allergy, it affects the immune system and makes your body want to kill itself. A.K.A. swelling and stuff. Because, as I said, people can die and people have died from allergies. The only allergy I have, thank goodness, is seasonal allergies. So, basically, right now I can only... Breathe out of one nostril, this nostril, because the other one is clogged up with mucus, because it's summer. So there's pollen out in the air, I have to take my medicine, my allergy medicine, but it doesn't always work fully, so more times than not, I just, you know, get clogged up. It's mucus running down my throat. Stuff happens. I'm fortunate that I, that the only other allergy that I have Besides to this random spice and this random hot dog on a stick thingy that I got at a fair, at a festival when I was younger, is one kind of medicine. Only other allergy I have is this one ingredient in medicine. I'm not going to get into it. But and that's the only other one. And that one apparently only gave me like rash or hives or something like that. I don't know. And the one and the weird spice on the sausage on the stick, it just made my salivary glands swell up. So that one also wasn't lethal, thank goodness, because or else I wouldn't be here today. Because that that reaction started happening in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and then there's there's lots of misconceptions that I can get into. To be honest, I don't really know a lot of them, but it is just, like, kind of one of those things. It's like, a lot of people just don't fully understand things, and then they try to act like they know everything. When they should just realize, you don't know everything, shut up, check your facts, come back when you understand. Since that's just, like... Like, say, people trying to argue the flat Earth thing. The Earth is very clearly round. You can see a curvature if you're at the perfect position without any issue. Like, say, the flat plains in Nebraska, for instance, or a desert, if it's a very, fairly flat desert. Or if you go up on a mountain, you can usually see the curvature there. I've never actually really been much higher than... Planes, but well, doesn't really matter much to me. 
because, hey, maybe I'll be able to go to mountains at some point. Because I'd really like that, because mountains are actually really lovely, to be honest. But, like, just people who try to argue these really stupid things. Or, like, how a while ago it was the anniversary for the moon landing. And then instantly the History Channel just pulls up, I think it was the History Channel at least, pulls up a show. Is that a history or discovery? Anyway, pulls up a show on these people trying to go, okay, we're sure it's a conspiracy theory, so we're going to go try and prove that the moon landing didn't actually happen on the fucking anniversary of the moon landing. That's, like, I can't remember, but it was something in one of Mini Lives Reddit videos where a person, I think, got chewed out on their birthday. That's basically like doing that. That's basically like chewing someone out on their birthday when they didn't do anything wrong. It just, it just bothers me that people can just be so dumb sometimes. And just like I know for every dumb person that believes that the moon landing was faked or that their earth is flat, there's an intelligent person who realizes that those people are wrong. Let's go be a scientist. I understand these things. And I understand that the human race isn't is probably not doomed. But knowing some of the people who I've met in my life I don't know. This is just... Uh, granted, I've needed to get this off my chest for a while because ranting about this stuff on my own just doesn't have the same value as just putting it out on the internet for random people to listen to and make fun of me. Because I'm sure that's going to happen some. Because to be honest, I kind of sound like I'm just trying to find issues with the human race, and to be honest, I probably am. But, like, this just, 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 it does bother me. And I think that's kind of another big reason why I'm doing this, is not a lot actually bothers me. Don't be surprised by that, but not a lot actually bothers me. I am actually a fairly nonchalant person. But the things that bother me, bother me a lot. And stupid people bother me a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Mainly just for the simple fact that they think they're intelligent. That, I think that's all it comes down to, really, is just people, since people being not intelligent in certain areas, I'm perfectly fine with it. But people, and the reason why I'm using not intelligent instead of stupid, is because, in my opinion, no one is stupid. No one is stupid. Instead, you have your certain areas of interest, such as, I have interests in paleontology, sciences, that kind of stuff, video games. You ask me anything about sports, I'm probably not going to know it, because I don't care about sports. You ask me stuff about boating, I'm not going to know anything about boating. You ask me about hiking, and I mean, I've hiked before, but I don't know any of the actual logistical natures of it. I don't know about spelunking, I don't know about any of that stuff. That's not my areas of interest. People have their own areas of interest. Doesn't mean they're stupid. Just means that they don't know about certain areas, and they know really well about other areas. That's my opinion. But when people are actually legitimately stupid, trying to pull off knowing something when they don't, just bothers me. People, you know, asking dumb questions, that's fine, except for some of them that my dad has told me, like this one that he saw online that he had to share with me. What was the average age of an 18-year-old in 1760, I think it was? Yeah. That, that, that's the thing. Like, yes, there are definitely dumb questions, like this one that I remember hearing. Can you cool down the sun with lava, and which is hotter, lava or the sun? 
there, there, there definitely are dumb questions. That's just the simple fact of life. But it's better to ask the stupid questions, get your facts straight, learn something, and be more intelligent in that area in the future than thinking that you know already the answer to your question and then telling as many people as possible, I'm right, you're wrong, here's why, insert not facts here. Because that just makes you look both like an idiot and a jackass. That just, that's just straight off. It just makes you look like a jackass. When you think you know something, and you just go off and think other people are wrong just because you're right, just because you think you're right, or people trying to pull off their opinions as facts. Yes, it may sound like I'm trying to do that now. I am not. I understand all of my stuff is opinion. You can go away thinking, oh, hey, all of this is real. You can go away thinking, oh, hey, all of this is fake. You can go away thinking I'm a complete idiot. I don't care. That's your opinion. But people who try and pull off their opinion as fact, that's another thing that bothers me. And it really just does. Because people just shouldn't. Granted, a lot of people shouldn't do a lot of things. But that's, again, just my opinion. Like how I'm never going to do anything alcohol-related. Because, personally, I think people who do that is, are idiots. There's really no point, in my opinion, to getting drunk. Sure, you feel loopy and happy for a while, but then you wake up with a giant headache. That you have to try and fight and then live with for the rest of the day until you go and drink again. Like, it just, it's... And again, I haven't had, a, I haven't had alcohol yet. And I'm not planning to. But, still... It's just one of those things. Just like alcohol is a poison. I don't see why people should poison themselves. I don't want to see why people want should get high. I don't see why people need to smoke or vape or any of that stuff. I'm not going to try and change people, though. Just like, you know, anyone who's, you know, Christian, Jewish, etc., etc., whatever religion. Because... There's bloody loads of those. I'm not going to try and change them. I have my own personal belief system. If they will respect me and try to not change and not try to not convert me, I won't try to pull up facts that prove their religion false. Because frankly put, they can try and show as many facts to me to prove their religion correct, and then it gets hellish. Because frankly put, the only reason why things exist is because there's at least some truth in it. How much truth? No one knows for sure. That's kind of the reason why there's so many religions out there. It's because life is just a big mystery in the regards of why the hell we're here, why the hell everything is here, what happens after death, etc., etc. Since it is one of those things oh God, I just like bit the pepper, that just, you know, no one wants to think once you're dead, it's over. I don't want to think that. That's the reason why I have my own personal belief system. That is, you know, just me and me alone. Because I don't want to think that once I'm dead, that's it. I'm just gone. And most people don't want to think that. Most people also want a reason why bad things happen to them, so thus they look to religion and stuff. And I'm more than positive certain things in religion to some degree happened. Like, I'm more than positive there was a guy named Jesus who came around and, you know, did good stuff. I'm more than positive that there was the Buddha person, because, well, there's actual historical stuff. That shows these people existed. Gods and God, the God, God and gods, a bit less certain. 
because there's no actual physical evidence of them ever existing. But still, I'm not going to try and get into that. I'm not going to try and c convert people by saying, oh, your god doesn't exist because there's no physical evidence of them ever existing. Because that's just not a thing. That's just called being a dick. Because people have the right to believe whatever they want. People have the right to do whatever they want, in my opinion. Within reason. Always have to say that. Within reason. Because murder is bad. Rape is bad. All of that really bad stuff is bad. But, like, you know, if people... I, I don't know if I got into this with the gender and whatnot, but, like, if people want to, you know, same-sex marriage, go ahead. Abortion, go ahead. Uh, se sex change, go ahead. All I'm asking is that you know the consequences. That's one of the biggest things, actually, to be honest, that is one of the biggest things that bothers me, is people who will either try and make people not have a choice, people who will pretend like they're giving people a choice, but instead kind of making it seem like they're not giving people a choice, or people who just don't understand either the options or the consequences. Like, let's go into a little bit of abortion stuff, because I'm not going to go into vaccination, anti-vaccination, because there's very clearly a right and a wrong there, in my opinion. So again, all my opinion. But I'm not going to try and get into that, because, nah. So we're just going to go into a little bit of the abortion stuff. Since, to be honest, in most situations... There are three options. In abortion, there are at least three options that I can think of. People are trying to advocate for one or the other. Technically speaking, one of those is also advocating for the third, but not exactly. It's either pro or pro-life, pro-choice. To be honest, I'm going to phrase it like that because then it makes both sides sound equally as good. Because it's either that or anti-choice and anti-life, and that just sounds god-awful both ways. But, to be honest, sometimes the, like, pro-choice stuff makes it seem like you've got less of a choice. Because it almost seems like it's trying to push you towards having an abortion. Granted, I don't know. I am a guy. I will never get pregnant in my life. I don't exactly pay attention to that stuff. But I'm more than positive there are some of those out there, just like there are some really hardcore pro-life people. Since I have seen a lot of those because, well, I'm currently in a small town that is fairly Christian. So I've seen nearby a fair bit of billboards that are like, take my hand, not my life, and stuff like that. Just like pro-life stuff. And there's, there's three options here. You can either get the abortion, have the child and keep it, have the child and give it up for adoption. Not many people realize the third option, to be honest. And that's just one of the biggest things that does kind of bother me, is because people think, oh, I don't want to have a kid, let's kill it. Because to be honest, yes. Up to a certain point, it's not really killing. Because the child is not technically speaking, alive. It is not its own organism yet. It is basically just a growth. Past a certain point, it starts to... And I think they've made laws and stuff for this that you can't you know, get an abortion after a certain trimester. I think you can't get an abortion within the third trimester. I'm not sure. But, like... After a certain point, it does kind of get to towards killing an actual human being. But that's only when it actually shows very clear signs of life, like when it starts kicking and everything. That's kind of more towards that. And when it starts, basically when it actually is fully developed. And is just now in the growth stage. That's when... And don't... Or at least in my opinion, you shouldn't. 
but like no one ever realized and I feel like not a lot of people realize the whole adoption route. Because yes, you're giving up your child. But if you didn't want it anyway, what the hell is the point? Make a family who can't have a child happy. Make a family of, you know, same-sex couple happy. Something like that. Go into that. Do that. It's fine. Because then you're making people happy. You don't have to deal with the kid you didn't want anyway. It's fine. It's a win-win situation, in my opinion. God, I'm saying my opinion a lot, even though you people already realize probably it's my opinion. But I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to force them into anything. Because that's not the way that I am. I don't try to force people into doing anything. God, my hair has got awful. That'd probably be one of the reasons why I'm forcing it the wrong way. That's about the same. God awful. God trying to use the camera to adjust me is god awful as well. Anyway. Like. You all understand basically. Like. These are just kind of some of the things that actually do annoy me. Because people just don't understand. And I mean, yes, again, I could go into the anti-vaxxer thing. I could go in more into the world is flat. I could go into more into a lot of this stuff. But I think you all kind of understand the gist. That and I've been ranting for almost 40 minutes now. And I feel like I should stop, get a drink, and go laugh at some dumb shit made by Mini Lad. Check him out. He is good. Check out other YouTubers. They're good. Better than me. I'm not that great if you haven't noticed. But I'm trying. I am trying. Anyway. So. Hope I... I don't know. I don't really want to say enlightened. And I don't really want to say swayed or anything. And I don't really want to say enjoyed. Because it probably wasn't a very enjoyable thing. I hope you all listened and... Gave some of this stuff some thought. That's good way crazy. I hope you all listened and gave this some, some of this some thought. Because some of these things are very pro provocative things, at least in my opinion, that people don't think about. People don't think about them. People don't ever pay attention to them. People just live their lives. And just kind of segment themselves off into their own reality. When in reality, we should all just band together as a race. Or as, at the very least, countries. As peoples. And just stop, like, hating each other. For stupid stuff. Because of the simple fact that we're human. We make mistakes. Just deal with it. Don't get offended. Full circle. Hope you guys did some thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Channel wants more. Channel wants for some other stuff. Channel wants more video games. Before I continue more, goodbye.